Hello, my friends. It's time for yet another story. I know you're excited. I am. This is from Reddit user Jinx Helsing. Chug. The Ark of Freshman Year. Hey, Moonhorse. Hey, baby. What's going on? Hope you and everyone else reading this is having a great day. I certainly am. I finally got around to telling this story on the internet. I wrote it out somewhere else, but decided it might be nice to put it here as well. I'm sorry in advance, I can't remember all the things that happened, so I may be blanking out some information. The cast. Rhea. Me. 14 years old, wore my brother's old hoodie even during the absolutely awful southern heat. Oh, God. I was a massive weeb, like creepypasta, fanfiction, and didn't have that many friends due to a rumor going around about me from the previous year. Christine, my best friend, more like big sister to me. I've known her since middle school, about a year above me. She was in JROTC and band at the same time. She seemed like the type of person to snap at random, but she's actually really great. Liked anime, but wasn't really re weeby about it like me. Singing, drawing, wrote fanfiction as well. Could be rather protective of me, viewing me as a younger sister. Zero. One of the few guy friends I had at the time. Same grade as me, was in band at this point. Would ride the bus with me when we didn't have band practice. I like video games, once again also anime, but his taste was more... Code... Gas? I don't know what that is. Had a more minor role at this point. Chug. <laughs> the carniv <laughs> carnivorous humanoid underground... Guy. <laughs> The antagonist, same grade as Christine, like Pokemon, talk about Chug Conroy a lot. What? Don't mind it, just hate it when he tried getting me to watch his videos. I have no idea what you were talking about. And was in the same boat as me, except the reasoning for his lack of friends was for much different and multiple reasons. Some notable reasons range from screaming at a child on the bus, I think a second grader or something like that, to being escorted out of class due to a matter of BMs and the smell becoming noticeable. Oh boy. Literally the guy that made me hate going to school even more. So you guys are probably going to ask, Rhea, how'd you get into this situation? Well, it all started in August of 2014. A young grudge-looking... grudge-looking? Girl was headed to the bus stop to get home and do whatever the hell she does in her habitat. I had a 2DS on me during the time, since Zero was at band practice that day, and the school-issued iPad was currently dead in my backpack. Oh, you kids. Oh, you kids and your electronics, and the school gave you an iPad. I made the mistake of taking it out before getting to the bus stop, so it was in the sights of one lying in wait. All of a sudden, someone was trying to catch my attention and ask, Hey, is that Pokemon? I turned around and kind of got hit with a bad smell. I can only describe it as walking into a hoarder's decently kept bathroom. Ooh. Not too bad, but could still make you recoil a bit when it first hit. His breath, though, was worse. I don't really have the best oral hygiene, but God, this was terrifying. This guy was about my height, probably an inch or so taller, about 5'5", five five, had long, kind of wavy, dark hair, and some facial hair growing on him. Uh, yeah, it's Pokemon White. I, I really like it. I told him, kind of awkwardly. Interactions with new people were, and still are, a bitch. He seemed happy about that and quickly started to talk to me from there until I had to leave on the bus. The next week or so, I was kind of happy to have someone to talk to while waiting for the bus. Especially someone that had some of the same interests as me. But it was about, say... Week two, when things started to get weird. So, how did this get awkward? Well, Chug developed a crush on me and asked me out. I wanted to refuse off the bat, but I didn't like him that way. But I decided to say that I'd think about it. For the next few days, he was trying to get the answer out of me, hoping for a yes. A yes was not what he got. I didn't want to be blunt and say no. He wouldn't have taken that answer anyway, so I kept making excuses to let him down gently, ranging from, I only really saw him as a brother, didn't take that answer, and 
he was much older than me. Literally a year, but this is my excuse, mostly due to my dad. Yeah, he didn't take any of my answers. This boy wanted a yes. He kept persisting until I got onto my bus and headed off to the safety of home. But home couldn't last forever. I was dreading tomorrow. He kept on, and soon enough, I started to tell Christine, Zero, and two other friends about this guy. Christine and the other two, who I'll name Jojo, had some stories to tell me. They told me about his reputation. The fun fact, Christine was actually in the same class when he had to be escorted out. Neither of them wanted me to keep being friends with this guy, since he wasn't really the best kind of person to be around. But I kept being friends with him, hoping to get past this, and... Honestly, it's pity. I cannot tell you how much I want to go back in time and slap myself for continuing this friendship. In fact, things just seem to get much worse. So, another reputation hit to this guy is that he's pretty much a stalker. I don't know if he was going after other girls, but two in my grade, he was. One was, sadly, myself, and the other was this nice, kind of popular girl. Honestly, she's cute, and I feel bad for her being a part of this guy's radar. So, what did this guy do? So, what did this guy start to do? Well, he started to interrupt or butt into conversations he wasn't a part of, but I was. I hated this because he started to do this when Zero and I would talk while waiting for the bus, aka one of the only times I could talk to him during this point started to wait in front of my fifth period classroom and followed me to lunch. We sadly had the same lunch period. And he kept uncomfortably close to me, so my nose was pretty much dissolving from the stench mentioned earlier. He gave me love notes, hoping that confessions would stir my heart and have me fall in love with him. I threw one into my dad's burn pile as soon as I got home. It may not seem like much, but this is what I remember, and I just remember feeling absolutely uncomfortable during this time. It didn't help that people in my grade who didn't know about him kept pestering me to date him as well. But with these cases, my knight in shining armor came and helped me. This lovely knight just happened to be the protective Christine. She's getting pissed at the fact that despite my protest, Chug would not leave me alone. So she and Zero became major help during this year. Zero made sure that he kept near me while we were at the bus riding days together and kept Chug at bay. As for Christine, oh Christine. She was a major help during this time. When Chug started to try and follow me to lunch, Christine would be waiting and walk right next to me. And when Chug would try to sit near me at lunch, I started to sit in the middle of two of her friends with Christine being in front of me so she could shut this guy down so many times during this time. And yet... He still had the smart idea to keep going on. Then, there were the last three days of the semester, when we would do our major tests of that year. Usually during these three days, some kids would stay after school because they either can't get home after the test they wanted to stay for, or for the free food. I was the free food kid. Now, Chug got close to me during lunch when winter semester tests were going. I got saved later by an upperclassman who I actually did date for a bit, and we'll call him Green Day. He was nice, and we chatted a bunch, and all the leftover kids had to wait waited out until the buses came. As for spring semester, Jojo was the one to rescue me. I stuck to him until the bus came around, and we hung out in the choir room, which was right across from the main office. This led to me just kind of sitting around, meeting my future choir teacher, who didn't give literally zero fucks. I waited for my friends to get out of the small closet near the choir bathrooms because they were vaping in there. Repeat, the teacher gave zero fucks. <sighs> you damn kids. We also messed around with a few of the props that were off in the theater class's closet until told to stop. In the end of this lovely arc, I left that school and hoped that it would be the end of that. I hoped it would be the end and that I knew I was never going to watch a Chugga Conroy video. I still don't know what that is. Both of these statements were a lie. I ended up watching some of his Zelda videos when I started to get into the series, and sadly, Chug was in my health class for the first semester of my sophomore year. But that's a story all of its own, the last arc of him being in my life. If you'd like to hear that as well, I can write that down. Thank you for reading, and I hope it was okay. Well, first off, I will just have to say, I do not understand you children. <laughs> um... <laughs> 
Moon Horse is an old horse, and I just don't understand all these things. Do they really give iPads to kids from school now? Is that like a thing? You can just have that? I had no idea. I also went to very poor schools where, like, paper was a commodity and you had to get your own. So, okay, let's... I mean, this guy is just... He's, he's just super clingy and... The fact that he keeps pestering you as if to hope to wear you down into going out with him is mega creepy. That is not okay. That That is some fucking... Whoa. That is some warning signs and a half, kid. Uh, I would definitely be worried about that. It sounds like you got a good group of friends, and it sounds like they're doing what good friends do and trying to keep this weird guy off your back. I do hope, since you said this is only a part and there is a whole other part and you can write that part too, I, I do hope that, you know, it ends good and you don't have to deal with that shit all the time. Because, jeez, I hear shit like that and it just makes me think of those, those neckbeards who just like follow girls around in the hopes that they'll see them as the, the true gentleman while pretending to be their friend because, you know, they're just fucking assholes <sighs> wow what a story anyway thank you all for watching and if you enjoyed this and would like to send in your own story you can do that by going to r slash moon horse stories and sending it there i'm pointing weirdly as if you can see me and if you want to donate to this channel you can do that by going to my patreon or buying stuff from the merch store i'm still pointing again as if you can see me i have no idea what the fuck i'm doing right now I'm very tired. Um, <laughs> I, I think I'm losing a little bit. I'm gonna go to bed. I love you all, and I will see you in the next video. Okay, everybody, it's sleepy time. Good night.